All right, 10th graders, here we go. Uh, you know a lot about ionic and covalent compounds, how to figure out if something is an ionic bond or a covalent bond, uh, how to give names and write formulas for these compounds. But we haven't yet talked about what their properties are. So what are ionic compounds like and what are covalent compounds like and how are they different and why are their properties different? So that's what we're going to discuss today. So open up your notebook, write down the underlying stuff. Um, there's going to be a table coming up, so pay attention to that as well. Here we go. All right, so just to review that there are two basic types of bonds, and it depends on what the electronegativity of the atoms are that are participating in these bonds. So um, remember that electronegativity is the ability of an atom to attract electrons to itself. In an ionic bond, you have one atom that has a very high electronegativity. It really, really wants to attract an electron. And you have one that has very low electronegativity. It doesn't want to uh, attract an electron. In fact, it wants to get rid of an electron. So that's ionic. And with covalent, you have two or more atoms with very high electronegativity. Um, they're both pretty good at attracting electrons to themselves. So if we look at a periodic table, this one's pretty cool. You can actually see that there's an area here that shows, uh, this is a graph of the periodic table. What I circled is very high electronegativity. So the metals are on the left, they have low electronegativity. The nonmetals are on the right, they have high electronegativity. So here we go, showing that. So for an ionic bond, we're going to have one atom that has low electronegativity from the left to the middle of the periodic table, and then two or more from over there. Um, if it's a polyatomic ion, you'll have several from over there with uh, high electronegativity. They give uh, an electron to the other atom, and then they have uh, opposite charges, so they're attracted to each other and they bond. This is different from a covalent bond where all of the atoms in the compound are from the side with high electronegativity, so two or more from that area, and they don't give away and take electrons, they just share them to make a covalent bond. So here's some key questions. Atoms in ionic compounds are bonded very different from atoms in covalent compounds, and because of this, they have very different properties. So what are the properties of ionic and covalent compounds, and what causes those properties? So the first thing to know is the structure of ionic compounds. You'll want to write this down. The structure is called a crystal lattice or an array. An ionic compound is not just two atoms bonded together. It's a whole 3D network of cation, anion, cation, anion, and this big network all bonded together uh, with electrostatic charges, so opposite charges attracted to each other. Looks like this. So this example is salt. It's sodium chloride. The green ones are chloride ions. The yellow ones are sodium ions, or lithium. This is lithium chloride. You can see that they're all bonded together in this huge array. You could substitute sodium for the lithium here. Here's another example. This one is sodium chloride. And you can see that because of this giant crystal array, uh, it's going to make a cube-shaped structure. And if you look really close at salt, like in this picture down at the bottom, uh, you can see that there are cube shapes. So you're going to construct this table in your notes to show the properties of ionic and covalent compounds. And you'll want to make sure that the line for conduction of electricity, leave a couple lines there because we're going to write quite a bit in that spot. When you've done that, go on to the next slide and fill this in for ionic compounds. So because ionic compounds are in this giant crystal structure, they're very hard, but they're also very brittle. So you can imagine a piece of chalk that you would write on a chalkboard with. Um, if you sort of poke at it, it feels hard, but you could break it very easily. Uh, this is being called, this is called being brittle. At room temperature, ionic compounds are solid like chalk or like salt. You need to heat them to very high temperatures for them to melt or to boil. As solids, they don't conduct electricity. However, if you melt an ionic compound or if you dissolve it in water, you free up the ions. And conducting electricity is a movement of those ions or electrons over a distance. So if it's dissolved in water or if it's melted, it will conduct electricity. And many ionic compounds are soluble in water. So let's contrast this to covalent bonding and the properties of covalent compounds. So just a review of covalent bonding, we have two or more metals. They share valence electrons. They don't transfer them like ionic compounds. 
And instead of making a giant crystal array, they're just uh, organized into smaller molecules. So in this picture, you can see all of these water molecules. They're not attached to each other. You just have independent water molecules. So what are the properties of covalent compounds? The covalent bond is very strong. However, it's not the covalent bond that gives the properties to a covalent compound. It is the forces between the molecules. And the forces between molecules are pretty weak. You can pull molecules apart from each other much more easily than you can pull ions apart from each other. So because of this, here are the properties of covalent compounds. Instead of being hard, they're actually rather soft. So at room temperature, sometimes they're softer solids or they're liquids or gases. Um, they have low melting and boiling points. So sugar, for example, will melt at a much lower temperature than something like salt. They never conduct electricity. And this is because there are no ions to conduct to move that electricity. And often, covalent compounds aren't soluble in water. They don't dissolve. There is one exception to this, and this is the last thing we'll talk about, is there are a special type of covalent compounds called giant covalent structures. And you're pretty familiar with these already. Um, in a, a giant lattice, sort of like an ionic array, will be held together with covalent bonds. But because they're covalent bonds, they're much, much stronger than ionic bonds. They have uh, very high melting and boiling points. They're extremely hard. So here are some examples I'm sure you've heard of before. Um, diamonds are carbon atoms held together with ionic, or sorry, with covalent bonds. And also graphite is carbon held together with covalent bonds. So uh, that first one, this guy right here, it's a giant covalent structure of silicon dioxide. And that is actually a ruby. In the middle here, this guy is a diamond. And on the right-hand side is graphite. And those are covalent bonds, but because they're held together in a giant structure, they have different properties. They're actually very hard. All right, so you should now know why uh, the properties of ionic compounds are different from the properties of covalent compounds, and you should know why the properties are different. So write a two to three sentence summary and write down any questions you have. Bring this to class and you'll be ready to go.